What made you choose like to better yourself and get yourself out of that mindset? So I tried to change career paths completely after my car accident. You were, you said you felt like you would never be able to go back to that kind of a teacher again. I want to help other people mentally. So if you were to go down that route, what type of life coaching would you get? Huh. I just want to fit in to where I am. I'm trying to think of like where to begin with. Welcome yeah, back, guys. <laughs> um, AstroCast episode nine. We're recording with Michaela today. She's a personal trainer. She is she is a teacher. She's a fitness enthusiast. She has a lot of stuff. She's going to share a lot of personal experience with us today. We're fortunate enough to have her. Thank you for hopping on today. Uh, tell course. us about yourself. So I'm Michaela. I work with children with special needs, and I'm also a personal trainer. Um, trying to think of like where to begin with everything. So I started going towards my personal training career in 2020 when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. It was more of like a something to do on the side on top of helping students with special needs. At age 21, mm -hmm. I started working with children with special needs. I am 33 now, so it's mm -hmm. been many, many years. Um, in 2021, I was in a car accident. I fractured my neck. I wasn't able to lift weights, which was like what I love to do. Mm -hmm. um, from that, it took months and months of recovery, but I was able to bounce back. Mm -hmm. I, funny story, so I tried to change career paths completely after my car accident. I became a life insurance. Really? Yep. I tried to sell life insurance. How'd you okay. like it? It was Sales. awful. It awful. Was awful. Yeah. Why was it awful? <laughs> so I went through I went through this company, I'm not gonna say their name, but it was very like pyramid schemey mm -hmm. type it was commissions only. Mm -hmm. Um I was at the point where I felt like I could only physically do a desk job mm -hmm. because working with children with special needs is very physically demanding. Mm -hmm. So you're playing with the kids, you're lifting them, mm -hmm. toilet, all that other fun stuff. Yeah. Um, and I ended up trying life insurance, hated it, mm -hmm. kept going to PT, kept going to the gym, ended up getting myself back to working for now Bristol schools. Okay. Wh why did you give the insurance a try? You were, you said you felt like you would never be able to go back to that kind of a teacher again. Mm -hmm. So what were, what was your thought process and, and was it an attempt to just like blindly find something else or how did you feel throughout that it was definitely blindly fi finding something else um i try so i started my own personal training business back mm -hmm. during covid and that kind of failed i have a great personality everyone comes to me like oh you'd be great in sales mm -hmm. but also i have like the limiting beliefs that i'm not good enough to okay. do these things um, someone from high school actually reached out to me and was like, hey, like we're recruiting people to try this. And that's gotcha. how I got into it. It was mm. someone that knew me mm. that like I could trust from high school. Mm -hmm. that okay. I jumped on board and tried it out and it, it wasn't for terrible, you. terrible. Yeah. Okay. What made you not like it? Was it the sales aspect or was it the kind of scheme of getting people? You said it was pyramid scheme. Um, and I know how like kind of like somehow how some of them kind of work. Was it the the quote-unquote lie that you were selling people or is it just you didn't like it in general i felt like i was selling to a demographic of people rather than really helping people like mm -hmm. i felt like they were it was a lot of cold calls mm -hmm. and the people that i was reaching out to weren't making enough money to even afford the insurance mm -hmm. that's what they do that's what they get people yes puts them so, in a tight spot yeah yeah and i gotcha. felt really weird being like okay so if so and so dies who's gonna pay their funeral expenses like mm -hmm. i felt like it was just not mm -hmm. not like up my alley to be trying to drag people into this when they couldn't afford groceries mm -hmm. next week yeah yeah shows a lot of compassion because yeah. a lot of people take mm. they utilize those people and they take advantage of them mm -hmm. um and there's like top producing agents who literally like take advantage of people who can't afford to you could say pay groceries. Yeah. Um, they get and they sell my expensive insurance plans. So that's another monthly fee they have to charge. So you didn't like insurance. Yeah. No. Um, but you also said you also said personal training failed. Yes. Why do you think it failed? So I started back in 2020. Had my first client. Um, 
I didn't feel like sales wise, I had enough knowledge mm-hmm. to put myself out there in the right way to attract the right clients. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was kind of just same with my social media presence now i just throw things out there Mm -hmm. and see like if anyone bites it or messages i'm not a cold calling type of like Mm -hmm. reaching out person that i if i were to do that i could see flourishing in the sales Mm -hmm. um training wise i'm great like i'm very attentive to my clients Mm -hmm. it's all about Mm -hmm. like working where you are and working up from there um my first client she still keeps in touch with me to this day. And she actually was like, you should do life coaching. Like, mm-hmm. I really want some life coaching tips from you. Really? So I'm like, okay, kind of branching into that to really? see how that works. Um, but life coaching is hard too, because it's like everyone needs a different type of life coach. Mm-hmm. Mm. Interesting. Okay. So if you were to go down that route, what would you, what type of life coaching would you get? So, so what is for those who don't know, what is life coaching? And like, what is that? Um, what does that do for the person and what would you be doing to help them? So the way that I would approach it is definitely still like under like the personal training and nutrition type of bracket where like they would, I would teach them how to make healthier choices every day to help them show up better in their lives. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like people even like going into work, they're reacting to everything Mm -hmm. versus like proactively taking care of themselves in the morning so that Mm -hmm. that when they show up to work, they're ready to go. They're high Mm -hmm. energy. Um, and I feel like even working in the schools, like I see a lot more like reacting versus like, I don't even know how to describe Mm -hmm. it, but just helping them venture through like what I've been through. Okay, cool. And you've been through a lot. I know we talk a lot at the gym dive in. Could you dive into, um, kind of your story as a whole like what made you get into this point what made you want to help people what made you um so i know you used to have like a more difficult past what made you choose like to better yourself and get yourself out of that mindset um what were some of the steps you took to do that so my upbringing um my mom has bipolar schizoaffective Mm -hmm. which is essentially bipolar so you have the mania you have the depression Mm -hmm. she's on medication for it She's been in, like, nursing care, psychiatric type care for the past 22 years. So Mm. she's deteriorated physically. So she's in a wheelchair or she's in bed. Um, She's in her mid-70s. She doesn't Mm. really move. I think watching her decline mentally and physically made me decide, like, Um. I want to help other people mentally so that they don't end up in that position where they're physically not Mm -hmm. able to do things for themselves anymore what kind of challenges did that pose for you dealing with that um i would say if anything it made me who i am so challenge wise it forced me to be more independent Uh, um mm -hmm. and just figure out things on my own but i always look at it as like those challenges caused me to be more independent and be able to do things for myself mm-hmm. versus relying on other people all the time. Okay. Got you. How big was your family? Not that big. Not that big? Interesting. Um, I, because of that situation, so my mom was admitted to the psych ward when I was 11. My dad wasn't psychologically able to take care of me either because he has schizophrenia. So he, yeah. Gotcha. Got everything. So he ended up in a group home. My mom ended up in the hospital and then in nursing care. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I still see both of them. So I still have like a good relationship with both of them. Okay. So Um, where were you? I ended up with my aunt and uncle. Any siblings? Okay. Yes. So I have two older sisters. Um, One's 10 years older. One's 20 years older than me. Oh, wow. Jeez. Yeah. What a spread. So one's 53. (laughs) Damn. Yeah. But yeah, what is no. right? Full siblings, half siblings? Both half. Interesting. Both half. So both have different fathers, same mother. Really? Yep. Interesting. Okay. Yep. Man, okay. So then how do you think, how did that play a role with your self-belief, with your kind of self-confidence? How do you, you know, what was your experience? My self-confidence was very low, I would say. I think I've always been the person to like walk into the room and just scope out what everyone else is doing and then Mm -hmm. i get a feel for it and then i want to mold into what like the room atmosphere is Mm. yeah so whatever the energy is that someone else gives me i'm going to give them the same energy Mm. 
Okay. Hmm. Do you think, has that been a positive, a negative? You know, how has that played out? Um, I'd say communication-wise positive, because I'm very good at, like, communicating with other people. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. But negative in trying different things and, like, Mm. reaching out to new people and trying to branch out what I already do. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And how that kind of actually boosts your ability to work with kids with with, uh, fitness clients. Yep. Okay. So, um, at what point... You said Taylor? Yep. Are you, guys, you guys are engaged? Yes. As yep. of when? October 26th. Really? Yeah. Yep. Congrats okay. again. It's <coughs> big, you. yeah. Thank you, yeah. Really? Yep. Okay, how old is he? He's, he just turned 28 yesterday. Okay. Oh, happy happy yep. birthday. Happy birthday, Taylor, if you're watching. Yep. Um, <laughs> And how long has it been together? Since July 3rd of 2018. So it's been mm. like five and a half years. Hmm. Okay. Yep. So... How has, how have those internal feelings maybe changed? Have they changed since meeting him? How, how, um, has that played a role in your relationship? So our relationship, I would say it's funny because, so long story short, his birthday is the same day as my mom's birthday, which Mm -hmm. when I first met him, I was like, this is really weird. (laughs) You guys have the same exact birthday. Uh, But, um, I would say he like we are both super comfortable around each other. Um, mm-hmm. But for me, it's always hard to trust other people just because of my upbringing. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. But he's also had a tough past, too. Um, his mm-hmm. father died when he was young. Oh, man. So I think, unfortunately, like when you go through trauma or whatever Mm -hmm. it sometimes bring the brings those people together yeah Mm -hmm. but i think both of us are super aware of like what we have gone through Mm -hmm. so it's helped us build like we bought our first house together like we've just kind of like built from the bottom Mm -hmm. if that makes sense i want to ask more about the kids and so are you currently are you still working as a as a special ed teacher or Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay. And so, what? Where are you trying to go, in, uh, as of now? In what path? What direction are you trying to uh, kind of follow? So right now, I mean, I love what I do. Mm-hmm. I I like the schedule because I work the school year and mm-hmm. then I work a summer camp. So it's mm-hmm. like I have weeks off, which mm-hmm. is great. Like I have like the winter break and like parts of the summer off. Mm. Um, So I like that schedule. I really want to mix helping, like, students and people with special needs and personal training Mm -hmm. together. That's, like, the ultimate goal. Um, But, yeah, I was saying my father has schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. But I've also asked him, too, like, has anyone ever diagnosed you with autism? Mm -hmm. Because as I've worked with students with autism, I'm like, I see it in my dad, too. Uh. Mm -hmm. Like, the routines, the schedules, the worry about, like, not being able to control things. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of what he shows is what I see in my students. And he said he had a learning disability. Mm. But back then, it's like a lot of people Mm. were not diagnosed with autism. Yeah. How do you help people through that? What do you, when you see those, um, those habits in kids, how do you react to that or how do you help them through that? It's kind of like you just have to push through Mm -hmm. and you have to be the trusted adult to like have them know that you're there for them, even though they're going through a challenge or something different. Mm -hmm. Um, So you definitely have to get the student to gain your trust and know that you're going to be there, like even if they fail. Mm -hmm. Mm. How do you start to build that trust? Through play, like we're out at recess, you're playing with the kids, you're not just, like, standing there mm. telling them to not do something. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm the teacher that's, like, in break space with them, like, mm. watching what they're doing, trying to interact with them as they're taking their break. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to build the trust, for sure. Interesting. Yes. How do you go to build the trust when there is that communication gap? Besides, like, um, besides playing and stuff like that, but, like, do you, is there more verbal cues How do you know when they trust you? And, like, what does that look like? That's a hard question. It's so hard because it's, like, I've been doing this for so long. Mm -hmm. 
But I feel mm-hmm. like too that so I used to work with a girl who was deaf and blind. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Um, wow. she had charge syndrome, which is like a very rare special needs mm-hmm. that people don't really hear about. Um, she was one of my favorite students. I got to go to the school for the deaf with her. I learned sign mm-hmm. language. Really? Mm-hmm. Um Are you fluent? And I, I'm I'm polite. Good for you. So yeah. I know a lot. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. I can do like finger spelling. I can like ask questions if mm-hmm. I need to. Yeah. Um I think learning um sign language mm-hmm. has definitely helped with communicating with people that can't mm-hmm. so i use a lot of sign with okay. the students so i think a lot of like body language eye contact because they're it's always like they always say oh children with special needs don't make eye contact mm-hmm. like that's like the is that true it's not true it's no. not true it's interesting not true. it's I mean, people with autism could make more eye contact than the average person, or mm-hmm. they don't understand how to make eye contact. Mm-hmm. Mm. But once they trust you, they will engage a little bit more. Mm. And Interesting. Okay. Jeff, go ahead. Huh? <laughs> I was going to tie it in, too. So in terms of what you want to do, kind of relating back to Marco's question before, what would you see yourself doing? Um, do you still want to like be involved and help like kids with challenges um, I know you, you, you said you also want to be able to help people with um, maybe body image um, mm-hmm. complications. How would you, would, do you plan on s- creating something that can mix two together? Would you narrow in on one and then kind of once that one's stabilized, you can go into something else? What do you think would be your like next step if you were to kind of branch off and start doing your, doing your own thing? I think body image wise, I still have a lot of work to do for mm-hmm. myself in order to get to that point. Mm. Um, after my car accident, I was emotion. The emotional eating was like out of control mm-hmm. because for some time I couldn't lift weights, which was like my form of therapy. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, and then I built the habit of just overeating, mm-hmm. and it all ties back to my mom. Because growing up, my mom was always on diets. She was trying to lose weight, mm-hmm. slim fast, the whole nine yards. Um, mm. So. Growing up, I didn't eat healthy. I was eating like Doritos and Coca Cola for breakfast. Mm. Jeez. Yeah. That Lucky was, you. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. We yeah, were, something. Wow. Yeah, we were on food stamps. We would go to the food pantry. Like, we were not very well off. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to break through that. But as I've gotten older, I feel like obstacles that have come my way have led to more emotional eating mm-hmm. rather than like a healthier way to mm-hmm. cope. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something that I'm still working for. On to this day. Yeah. Can you take us through some maybe more like pivotal moments? Because I, I personally, like, I don't know what that experience is like, what, what that must feel like. And oh, I don't understand um, what that does to a person. Can you maybe share a little bit about that? Like with the emotional eating? With the, the, the body image. The body and image. The, yeah. So for me, it was more um, my last long relationship. Mm -hmm. He was into bodybuilding. That's how I got like super into the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was, I wanted to like cut and diet kind of like the competitors do. Mm -hmm. And I ended up successfully cutting down to like 120 pounds. Mm -hmm. I was shredded essentially. Like I could have competed in bodybuilding. 120 pounds. I was, yeah. And now I'm, like, almost 160. Okay. What are you trying to get to? Right now, like, 140, 145. So I'm cutting again for summer. But it's more of, like, trying to get gain control over how I'm eating. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, like, after dinner, like, continuing to eat even when I'm not hungry, that's something that I'm struggling with currently. Mm -hmm. But Okay. Yeah. So one. portion control, yeah, yeah, like just trying to like mm-hmm. get back to technically where I was like before the car accident because mm-hmm. I gained a lot of weight after the car accident. How long did it, um, were you off of the gym for after that? Um, so it was a few months that I wasn't lifting, but then once I got to the right physical therapist, mm-hmm. I was able to like do like accessory stuff mm-hmm. and then I slowly built back up. Yeah. But I went to a chiropractor that said, like, you're not going to be able to deadlift anymore. You're not going to be able to squat Jeez. anymore. Yeah. Screw you. F- <laughs> yeah, I'm fracture, going somewhere else. Yeah. Well, the fracture in my neck, like, technically you're not supposed to, like, barbell back squat. Mm-hmm. But I did not listen. And I'm like, I'm going to keep going. And the, orth- the last orthopedic I went to said that I could do the whole, like, neck fusion. 
He it's said, but at this time, like point in time, I wouldn't do it. I'd advise against it. Type of thing. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Jeez. So would you say, so Shelby and I are both like big into like natural like remedies instead of taking medication. I'm yeah. um, trying to like go like the whole, like, you know what I mean? Going against the whole big pharma thing as a business. They're trying to like make you like feel worse so they can keep mm-hmm. pumping you with medicine. So would you say that taking action and doing your own thing, like having a more healthy choice, like going to the gym, doing your stretching, do good doing mm-hmm. PT rather than getting like say a neck fusion or surgery, would you say that was more helpful than taking the route that the doctors are pushing, trying to make you kind of go their way, do yes, the thing. I com- yes, yeah. completely. Yeah. Cool. Cause I think our bodies heal the way that they need to heal. Yeah. Mm. Cause I hear a lot of people like they'll go and get like a spinal surgery done or something. I actually have a close friend that she had two back surgeries since her car accident. Yeah. She's still Jeez. having trouble. Jeez. Does yeah. she work out at all? No. Mm. So she did not work out before or after. I feel like if you don't do it before, it's harder to it's get harder into it after yep. because you don't have any like any muscle built up. You know your joints aren't used to it. It's yep. completely. It's a, it's like a shock for your body in a way. Yes, definitely. So you're not getting up. Anymore. You've had clients before that you've trained before. Yep. Um, what have their stories been? Do you have you dealt with people that have come to you after some sort of trauma like that? And and you know what kind of difficulties? How do you work through that? Hmm. Now, I would say I would see more clients with, like, eating disorders mm. and just women that want to feel more confident in their skin. Mm-hmm. I haven't met anyone that has, like, a traumatic okay. experience. I want to, but I haven't yet. Not yet. Mm. Not yet. Interesting. <laughs> yep. well, Which surprises me because I put everything out there on social media. Like, I talk about my parents. I talk about what mm. I've been through mm-hmm. growing up. Um, so I'm always surprised that people... Like, oh, I went through this. Mm-hmm. Like, mm. that could. Oh, go ahead. You think it's like that. difficult? Mm. Do you think? Um, it, I want to give you more credit <clears throat> than it, you're kind of giving yourself. Where mm-hmm. um, you admit that, yeah, like I have some, some like um, self esteem. You mm-hmm. know, my self esteem is not where I want it to be. Yet you talk about it very openly. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and so, and so, how did you get to where you are, and how do you help clients do that? So I, I mean, lifting weights in general has got me to this point. Because mm-hmm. originally, like back when I was younger, I could never finish the mile run. Mm-hmm. I was that kid in gym class that never got picked. Yes, yeah, it's it rough. Love, like, rough, socially rough. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I never was picked. Mm-hmm. I had asthma growing up. I yeah. still have asthma to this day. So it's like the breathing kind of affected like my athletic performance. Mm -hmm. I quit volleyball. I quit softball. I quit all sports. Mm. Um, And I'd say weightlifting because you can progress at your own pace has been what has built me up. Mm. Okay. I'm curious. I want to ask more about that internal dialogue that goes on in your head. Like it's all negative. What? What? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> no, no. that's a side I, I don't think many people understand. Mm-hmm. You know, what goes through your head when you're deciding, all right, I'm going to quit this or I'm going to give this up. Oh, I, this is too hard. I'm going to do something else. What, what does that internal dialogue look like? And, and how do you combat it? Really, that's really, hardest, what does that look like? That's the hardest part. I would say, I'd say there's a point in time where, like, if I'm working towards something, in the back of my head, I think of like my upbringing and like the obstacles that I faced and mm-hmm. not having the support of family that I wish I had back then. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so hard to explain because it's kind of like I stop doing something once the anxiety, because I have social anxiety mm-hmm. and anxiety in general. Um, I would never tell. You never would guess. never know. Yeah, right. That's what I'm what? Saying. Inside, I'm like exploding. What but do you on feel? The outside, I'm super calm. Um, it's more like my chest gets really tight. I get mm. hot. Mm. My throat is tight. Uh. Everything is just like constricted. Huh. Mm. Okay. So it's the internal dialogue is just negative. It's like you can't do this. You've never been able to do this. And so that you said that was that's the, the biggest thing holding you back from taking the steps that you want to do for like your brand and all that yes. kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Mm. 
the um, fear of judgment of others is like a big one for me because I've always been like uh-huh. I just want to fit in to where I am. So standing out is hard. Mm. Is 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 there a source of influence that's maybe bigger than some others, or or is it just a general sense of what uh, what people generally think, or is there like a specific? Uh, uh, are there specific individuals that kind of you worry about mo more? I'm not really sure. It's like I would say people my age and older. Huh. If that makes sense. Like, I can talk to people that are younger than me because I feel like I've been through. Mm. Um, but reaching out to people that are probably my age and further along or whatever is probably a big... It's a little harder? Mm. It's harder, yes. Like, I never... Why? You ever I think don't about even, it? I don't even know. Like, I never think about why. But I remember in high school, like, the people that were my age were the hardest to talk to. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Like, I had, like, a couple good friends and that was it. I would never just randomly like talk to someone in class or mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, like starting a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I don't ever start the conversation. Like no matter where I am, it's usually someone coming to me. Gotcha. And then I'll be like, "Oh, I'm Michaela." Like mm-hmm. interesting. Yep. Okay. Um, are you part of any like communities or groups that have like um, say the same sense of social anxiety that you guys would all like talk about or network with? Not really. Interesting. Are there any groups like that? I don't know. I've never, like, searched. Mm. I've thought of looking for groups for, like, mental illness Mm -hmm. because I feel like there's definitely groups out there of, like, oh, my parent has this or my parent has this. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. But I've never committed to any of those groups, but I've seen them. Got Mm -hmm. you. So maybe you can almost fill a niche in a way of, like, um, maybe talking about, like, the social anxiety aspect of how you feel. Because if you're feeling there's like probably hundreds of people out there, well, thousands of um, people out there who feel the same thing, but they're all scared to talk about it. So it just takes that one person to kind of like break down that like wall mm-hmm. um, and like build that community of people. That way you can like, you can all grow together and um, you change more than just like a person's life. You change a whole like, like a population of people. You change their lives in a way. Um, so like Marco said, you can definitely give yourself more credit because you have like all these like cool ideas in your head. Um, and it like working, working up to it, I feel like you will start it and you will do it. And like the, the impact that you'll make on all these people's lives, um, from kids with disabilities to people looking to, um, have a better sense in their own head of their body image to people who have social anxiety and are afraid to talk. Um, you can like really change those people cause it just takes you stepping out and just like saying, Hey, you're not the only one feeling like this. Um, That's true. change, change the world in a way. So it's cool. Yeah. Cool, cool ideas you got. Okay. So. <laughs> so if you had to start putting some of this in action, you know, what are some of those next steps? Which Probably talking, like actually talking, like what we're doing right now. Because it's something that I never, I think I started during COVID. I started like putting videos out there like, mm-hmm. my father has schizophrenia. This is what it looks like. Mm-hmm. This is how... But that was like years ago. Mm -hmm. But I started doing that. And why'd you stop? I don't know. You don't know. Maybe I didn't get uh, enough. That's not gonna cut it. I know. I don't. I don't think I got enough feedback from other people. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, I guess that didn't grab anyone's attention. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna stop. Or the time to do it. Taking the time to actually talk about it and Mm -hmm. like put content out there takes time. Mm. Definitely does. Um. And it's just like at the end of the day, it really just narrows down to like just the consistency of like staying, like doing it. You know what I mean? Like always like pushing it out there. And even if it's like not your best piece of content, just putting it out there, someone will see it. And eventually someone will be have the courage to comment because mm-hmm. as hard as it is for you to share that out there is just as hard from somebody from the receiving end to be like, mm-hmm. you know what? I agree. Or I would have give my feedback or I'm going to like share my story mm-hmm. because it takes so much courage from them. That they might not have built up yet for them to even do that. So there's courage took you to post mm-hmm. it. They might not even have to make, give a comment or give feedback. Um, that's a very interesting, very mm-hmm. interesting point. Yeah. So like one thing you do, you share it with your peers, like share it to your friends, family, anyone you have be like, Hey, I'm putting this content out there. Can you share it with somebody who think this might help? Um, like 
giving somebody a call to action or giving somebody like a will to do something will make them do it because like subcon- psych- like psychologically and subconsciously they want to help you especially if they're friends they want to see you succeed she's like hey could you share with somebody who this might help um but it's tough to do that because like you're now you're sharing with your friends and your friends are going to form an opinion about you and it's an entire thing because at the end of the day everybody judges everybody no matter what yeah. because our in mm. our heads we were always thinking something about somebody before we even see it mm-hmm. so it gets it gets tough because then you're like you're getting yourself into more uncomfortable territory with people that you're closest with mm. so it's almost it's almost awkward in a way but like someone's got to do it you know what i mean someone's got to look at it and someone's got to share it around so if you share it with your friends um and then they share it with somebody that they, they, they know it might like you might get some reach and then you might get somebody like a friend of a friend of a friend he's like you know what i'm gonna share my story and then one person shares their story and then another person shares their story and all of a sudden you've built like this really tight-knit community um of those people who have like the same same emotional same feelings and stuff mm. sorry I mean, I'm no, certain, no, certainly I starts with the with the baby steps don't uh, yeah. don't you do it sorry continuously putting out your stuff and and your your gym content that's already pretty inspiring mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and over time like um the very few people that that we follow on instagram mm-hmm. it's you might not be aware of it, but we come across the content, and when we see wins, it a, a very small part of us starts to light on fire, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's like, okay, they're getting wins, we yeah. got to be getting wins yeah. too, you know sure. what? And and or or we see somebody make an achievement and post about it. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, we'll we're we're usually quick to say, you know what? Hell yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, hell yeah. Oh, you're doing good. Yeah. Okay, you 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 close this, you or you're now doing that. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Yeah. And yeah. then and. and like little bits like that start to influence us and push us. So mm-hmm. you might not think it's maybe reaching people or people are kind of reacting to it or, or feeling something from it. But at least from our perspective, when we mm-hmm. see when we see those wins, oh, we, yeah. we feel great. We feel happy for the person. Mm-hmm. We feel we, we get more excited about ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we say, you know what? Like, you know, there's this standard all of a sudden. <clears throat> and so that's that's the effect that like, some of your content and, and the other people that we follow mm-hmm. has kind of had on us because we talk about it and like sometimes i'll text them i'll be like you, did you see this person did x and yeah. i was like man we i was like man we're lacking we're lacking we're like if we're falling behind we gotta like get on our mm-hmm. shit so it like pushes you to work even harder you know what i mean yeah. so and you're not comparing yourself to somebody but it's just motivating you to do more motivating you because like if you have that like like not competition with somebody, but if you feel like you have competition with yourself and then like, you're like, I'm not doing like, you see someone else doing it. And you're like, man, I'm lacking a little bit. And you like p- give yourself a kick in the ass. Like you'll listen, it'll push you so much further to do so much more. So true. yeah, mm. but your content is inspiring. It's like, don't Thank discredit you. your content. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I so. know. I, I'm very humble. I think that's the uh, term yeah. that I would use. Okay. Like I don't like to be like, <clears throat> like I want people to know that I want to help people. Mm-hmm. That's like my goal in life, mm-hmm. but I don't want to be like, the yep. star of the show gotcha type of thing okay it's tough especially when you're trying it's to build tough. your own thing it is because it like is. you want people to like come to you but yes. you also don't want to be like yeah i'm the shit yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> like so it's like <laughs> yep. it's like you need the yin and yang in a way yes it's interesting okay. so who would you say is, <coughs> who makes up your circle of people that you can confidently go up to and, and with any problem <coughs> with, with something on your mind who like what does that circle look like for you? So I have one best friend, Claire. Mm. Shout out, Claire. Yeah, Claire's awesome. Shout out, Claire. Do you live with Claire? Um, Is that the one you yes. live with? That's yep. Claire. The cool back tattoo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Claire, Claire's Gosh. cool. Yeah. No, she's really cool. She. So she actually met me right after my car accident. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. She. I think she followed me on social media because of the gym. Mm-hmm. Really. Um. Because we go to the same gym. I work at that gym now. I just do front desk there. But yeah. I work at the gym, so she um, followed me because of the gym, <coughs> and then after my car accident, reached out to me. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, we should go get our nails done or something." Yeah, that was and very I'm nice, like, her. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah. then we like went to get our nails done because she knew that I was in a low point, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like not even knowing me, she just was like, "Let's go, like go get some sushi or go." Yeah, what yeah. a person. So really? then we built a friendship based off of like I didn't have a job. Like at this point, like after my car accident, I lost my job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I felt like I was losing everything. Luckily, we didn't lose the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a really rough mm-hmm. point and she was there yeah. and just, we both really? like, grew together. Yeah. That's awesome. What an yep. angel. 
Yeah. You're right. No, what a person. Wow. And she's such a bundle of joy. I've met her like yeah, a couple times. She's, she's just such like a genuine, like, you're great yep. person. So shout out, Claire. Yep. So, huh. yep. Yeah. What a good person. But, yeah, That's awesome. Other than that, it's like, it's hard because I have friends like back from high school. Like I have a best friend, Katie, but she's in New mm. York. So it's hard to reach mm-hmm. out to her. Um, I don't know. I've been so like independent and doing my own thing. Mm-hmm. That I don't really reach out to other people. Fair. Mm. Which I wish I did more of. I'm the person that I'm like, if someone makes plans with me, I want to cancel. <laughs> but I right don't. Right with you. I still show <laughs> like, up, even though I want to cancel. Really? Yeah. I've always been that person. I don't... I don't... Like, socially, I like I have a battery. Where, yeah. like, oh. I need to be by myself to recharge. Gotcha. So, like, if someone's like, let's go to the movies or let's go to bowling, I'm not, mm. I'm usually not going. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm not a... Okay. The gym, yes. So, most of, like, the plans I make with my best friend are going to the gym, and then we have, like, talk sessions in the sauna. Yeah. Like, oh. that's, like... That's that's, that's a win. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned you don't reach out to people as much as you would like. Mm-hmm. Does part of you feel like... I, cause I, I've heard this is more, well, I've heard more and more people talk about it cause I want to relate to you with the, with the self-confidence thing. Mm. Sometimes you prevent yourself from reaching out because you feel like you want to, you don't want to be some sort of bother yeah. or you don't want to, like an inconvenience. yeah, yes. D- yep. what's your experience with that? So I think it all starts from childhood, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. I've always just tried to fit in with everyone. I so after I moved in with my aunt and uncle, I always felt like an inconvenience. Like to this day, oh, I don't talk to them. That hmm. makes sense. Um, I cut off all ties with that side of my family. <coughs> they my view of it is they were super money hungry. Mm-hmm. Um, like they were millionaires in mm-hmm. Farmington. They had a lot of money. They owned a company, sold it, lived mm-hmm. in a million dollar house. I lived in a million dollar house, but I didn't have a phone. I didn't have a car. So it was kind of like I saw the luxury of living in a beautiful home, but mm-hmm. I didn't actually like reap the benefits of it. You didn't feel that makes it. Sense. Yeah. Wow. So like I didn't have any assistance with going to school. Like it was just a very like, like I was embarrassed to tell people in my class like, oh yeah, I live up there, like on the mountain in that nice house. Yeah. Because I didn't actually like you feel, feel like, like you I didn't lived belong. there. Yeah. yeah. You didn't feel like you had I the I felt belong. like an outsider, yeah. like in mm. my own. Is it because they didn't like include you or is it because they were so focused on their own thing or do you feel like, did they treat you like an inconvenience? I was inconvenienced for sure. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, it makes sense, but it, but it wasn't your fault, Mm -hmm. right? It was never your, it was more like, cause I was the third daughter. It was like, Oh, now we have another girl to take care of Mm. because they helped out with the middle sister. And I believe they helped out with my oldest sister at one point when my mom was, like, in and out. Do they have any kids themselves? Yes. Okay. Oh, man. So yeah. they were, like... So they had three kids, and then they had to take in another one. So it was kind of, like... That makes you. sense. Yeah. How'd you yeah. get along with those kids? Pretty well. Um, but I think our relationship has just completely dispersed because I didn't get along with my aunt and uncle anymore. So it's kind of like I didn't want to reach out uh, to them because I cut ties with the aunt and uncle. Interesting. So I only see them when it comes to like court related stuff. Or yeah. yeah. Not even court? family parties here and there. Court. No, I'm not invited Jeez. to anything. What? I'm like the black sheep of the family. Damn. Why? And it's Can we? I, I honest. I think the back of my head thinks that they're afraid I'm gonna be like my mom. I think that's what I think. Mm. Like they're uh, they're afraid that mentally, because my mom wasn't always bipolar, mm-hmm. so she was actually in a car accident. Um, her she flipped over three times, mm-hmm. and after that car accident, that was when she was diagnosed. Damn. So, so it s- could have been like triggered mm-hmm. by something the in car her head. Accident. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Hmm. So part of me thinks like they're just waiting for the traumatic event to like. That cause. is not fair. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if that's the case because I've never like went to them and been like, "Hey, so why don't we like get together?" Or mm-hmm. I kind of just like separated myself from the situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's a weird. Jeez. Yeah. Interesting. So, how does that affect you today? Do you care? Do you use it? Um, do you want a strong relationship? How's that look? 
So when it comes to, like, now that me and Taylor are engaged, it's like, oh, we don't even want to do a wedding because it's... Really? It's just, it's like my family won't be invited. Mm -hmm. for, yeah. Well, or do I invite them uh -huh. and then get, like, the no on the invitation? Yeah. Because I have a feeling that they wouldn't show up. They didn't really? show up to any of my graduations. Yeah. Like, I was dropped off at my high school graduation by one of my cousins. Really? And I did graduation by myself. That's, yeah, that's what yeah. I said. Jeez. Yeah. So even the cousin that brought me to the graduation did not. It's say like, no. Nope. Damn. For the graduation. Yeah. Wow. So it's Jeez. kind of like, I've always, and I've always been <coughs> in a relationship where, like, their family has become my family. Mm -hmm. So at the time, the guy I was dating, like, his parents showed up <coughs> to the graduation. Yeah. So, but not my own family. How's, um, if you don't mind me asking, how's Taylor's family look? Are you guys close? Is it like kind of the same situation? How's that looking? So I feel like I kind of make him always see his family. Yeah. Because I'm like, we need to have some sort some, of. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. He's Something. more of like, he doesn't need to be with his family all the time. Yeah. I'm like, oh, we should mm. like, d like for his birthday. I'm like, we mm. should go out to dinner for your birthday with yeah. your family. Like that's mm -hmm. something that is important mm -hmm. I th that's more common i feel like for guys yeah we're just like yeah it's like yeah just like but i did it in my family mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. like yeah. can't both do it yeah no yeah, we everything. can't both do you gotcha. guys need something you need something <laughs> okay. interesting so yeah. you said you're not you're not thinking about doing a wedding are you thinking about just like going like to a lope we fly out fly out to vegas that. like going the courthouse we were thinking of interesting that, just eloping but then also his mom wants us to have like an actual like a ceremony yeah. So awesome. we're thinking something really small, like super small. Yeah, just do it. Like f family, close, close friends. It's like a lot. See, it'll save you a headache because mm -hmm. it's like people want to get involved. You know what I mean? And then if you don't invite somebody and they did want to invite yeah. and then it's going to make it even worse. Problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, what do you do? Yeah. So interesting. Okay. Just saying. If the Astra team got an invitation, we would oh, say yes. Oh, you show up. <laughs> we would say bro. Yes. We're always looking for. Or, or always, you, you, you don't have always to. Always looking for a special occasion. But uh, you don't have yeah. to. But if uh, if you if you were wondering, yeah, we it, pop, it, it would say yes. Yeah. We pull up. We pull up. We pop. Uh, we pop off. Get some nice suits. Yeah, well, we go hard. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. So I'm glad you guys are keeping in touch. Um, in touch with like, at least like his side of the family because it's oh, yeah. uh, it's tough. It's tough. Like like for in, like my situation, not close to my siblings either. I have um three half siblings. Um, and they all live in Oklahoma. Okay. So um, I'm close is I guess with my sister Destiny, as mm -hmm. um, we talk more frequently than I talk to the rest of them. But um, it's more so my fault too. I'm not saying like it's their fault. Like I kind of got ties, mm -hmm. um, there's some issues that like I still I'm petty. Mm -hmm. So there's some stuff I can't get over. Like Marcos <laughs> knows that, bro. Like I'm a I'm kind of petty. Right? I'm, it's, it's this is. It's like healthy to some degree. Yeah. yeah some things yeah. tick yeah. us off. Yeah. Right? Oh, and some <laughs> I'm just like. What are some I, of those things for you guys? Yeah. You go first, like I'd have. I would just say, money in general, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. people's views around money, because I feel like I didn't have much growing up. Mm -hmm. So it's like when I was put in that situation of seeing like how they use their money, like they had a farm, they had horses, mm -hmm. and oh. then it's like I grew up like barely eating food, yeah. and then I move into this house where like there's an, there's abundance, an abundance of right? food, mm -hmm. and I'm wow. like, why weren't they? helping out mm -hmm. so it was that was like the biggest obstacle for me mm -hmm. interesting so what does that do to your perspective of money today how do you I'm view it i'm still working on my money mindset for interesting. sure because i feel like the way my mom i was raised with i have two cents left to my name like yeah. that's how my mom was she was always spending her money mm -hmm. if she had it mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. even like she got a settlement for falling on ice mm -hmm. fifteen thousand dollars gone Damn. Within like a week, yeah. really? I don't even know what she spent it on, but she was just good at spending. Um, okay. So yeah. saving is hard for me, just because in the back mm. of my head I'm like, "Well, I want this now." It's like kind of like mm. getting through the obstacle of like waiting to reap the benefits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So me and Taylor are working on like doing the whole Roth IRA and mm -hmm. saving up for our retirement and mm. looking into what we're gonna retire with. Smart. Smart. Okay. Would you say he's really helped kind of take the lead with that or has he that has, influenced yeah. you? Because he has friends that are doing it already. Yeah. So it's like his friend Jared at the gym mm -hmm. is like, oh, you should do this, this, and this, and that will help 
yeah. with your retirement for the future. Because right now I have a pension from a different school district just sitting there mm-hmm. for when I retire. But then they're like, oh, you'll only make X amount. And it's like you can move that into an IRA mm-hmm. and get oh. more. Significantly more. more. Yeah, it's, it's better to do that. Yeah. Just max it. Yep. Um, interesting. Yeah. So in terms of... So say, because if you when you start your own thing, you're you're obviously gonna make money. Like mm-hmm. it's it, when you start your own business, like there's there's income, there's expenses. But at the end of the day, um, when you run it, like you'll you'll probably end up being profitable. Mm-hmm. How do you see yourself, um, utilizing that money? Would you utilize it to p- make stabilize yourself first, then give back? Would you like maybe help your family? Would you give back to other organizations to do, um, to support like the causes that you're that you're big into? What do you think would be um, what do you think would almost like rectify what you saw in the past to make money have a better light in your mind? We'll definitely put more of it towards the mortgage on our house. Understandable. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> like, <laughs> like number one, we talk. Me and Taylor talk about all the time how like we want to pay down our expenses more so mm-hmm. that we can help out like his grandma. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, my mom is good. Like she has <laughs> she has a trust mm-hmm. from her father. Mm-hmm. And she's in her upper 70s. I don't think my mom is going to live much longer, mm-hmm. which is hard. But mm-hmm. she's, like, in a good place. She mm-hmm. doesn't need anything. My dad's in a good place. He doesn't really need anything. Yeah. Um, I would uh, definitely sure. donate. Mm-hmm. For sure. Interesting. I think I see what, what you're trying to get at. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's an obligation for people with money to have to give some of it back or to do something um, like for a community with it, do you do you think there's an obligation for people? Because you you mentioned, you know, your your aunt and uncle weren't sort of exactly. helping, even though they knew what was going on. Do you think yeah. what's the responsibility somebody has um, when they have an abundance of money? Definitely to help others out, for sure. Hmm. Even if it's donating their time to like going to a soup kitchen or. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. helping someone out that can't like physically do what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what's a fair balance? What do you think justifies? Okay, you know what? Like, we spend this much money on ourselves, and we spend um, this much on like helping people. What do you, th- you know, what is, what's a good kind of, like, what's a healthy say amount? Say it depends on how much you make. Mm. Like, pers- like a maybe like a percentage of what you make to help out other people Mm -hmm. um i know with training in general i've given out a lot of free Mm -hmm. information and everything so Mm -hmm. i feel as though like i'm helping people out without expecting does work in your favor in the future though because like what does it ask for as you say free content free value eventually makes them come back as customers like yeah so it works out works out subconsciously Mm -hmm. um to add on to what marcos was saying um do you feel because obviously you said your aunt and uncle didn't help do you feel they had the reason to not help um, or do you feel like it was just out of spite? Part of me feels like it was out of spite. It's so hard to say because as an adult, like I don't talk to them anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's like I only have mm. what I grew up with and what I saw as like my knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the fact that I still don't talk to them to this day is like, yeah, yeah. Like my cousin, one of my cousins that I grew up with, he's like, oh yeah, like. Uh, an uncle said, like, you moved to Massachusetts, so that's why you don't come to holidays anymore. Because I saw him out. I was out with a friend at sushi, mm-hmm. and I randomly saw him. And I was like, oh, hey, how's huh. it going? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I thought you moved. So, they t- so, so they did you ever leave him? Did you ever live in Mass? Yes. Okay. So I gotcha. was born, mm. like, so I lived in Quincy for mm-hmm. the first three years of my life. So I was born in, in Boston. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But I don't remember it. That's fair. Yeah. And that my oldest sister still lives in that area. Interesting. Shelby loves she Boston. She would. I feel so sure we live there. I can imagine. Yeah. It's beautiful. We're going to um Anime Boston this year. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's like, pretty exciting. Cool. It's Interesting. Pretty, pretty sick. So, how familiar are you now with Boston? Kind of familiar. I've been there a handful of times. Okay. Okay. So, if you had to like recommend activities, or could you? Please do. Quincy Market, for sure. Quincy Market. Quincy Market. I've heard of this. Is that like a popular place? It's like a bunch of like little kiosks, which mm-hmm. is like cool stuff. Like it's just oh. like cool to walk around. I like going to Boston in the warmer months. Um, the winter, it's like super cold. Yeah, mm. it's probably packed. Windy, like the tunnels windy. are windy. Uh, 
Um, the Charles mm-hmm. River is beautiful. My aunt and uncle, another set of aunt and uncle, they lived in Boston, like in the Brownstones, which is like yeah. the expensive part of Boston. Jeez. Yeah. And they lived right next to the Charles River. Beautiful. Huh. Beautiful place. Good for them. Yeah. It's a play. Red Sox games, yeah. Bruins games. I would do those for sure. Really? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. No, my old roommate loves the Bruins, I think. If you're watching this, don't quote me. Um, yep. But I'm pretty sure he's a, like a Bruins fan. So, That's interesting. What Taylor and I want to do this. Really? Let's go to a Bruins game. Yeah. You should. Make it happen. Yeah. You know, like write it down and just like do it. Commit to it. You yep. know what I mean? Hmm. So if not, like people like will say it and then like you get busy. And then if you I don't know. have it, if you don't have it planned, if you don't have it planned, it means you won't look forward to it. If you don't look forward to it, you're not going to do it. Yep. So, because like uh, people mm-hmm. will say, like, oh, we'll just do, we'll plan a day, like, or we'll just like sporadically, we'll both be free and we'll do it. In reality, what happens? Just like, plan that day and we'll get to it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's the big yeah, thing. That's us all the time. Really? Uh, and then our routine just gets in the way because we're both like avid gym goers. We yeah. have work, gym, <sighs> dinner, sleep. Mm-hmm. You you guys in the gym? I don't yeah. get it. <laughs> Marco, fun fact about Marcos: he lifts daily, but he hates lifting. I hate really? the gym. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I'm like I'm not even daily. It's maybe I'm in there three four times a week. Okay, that's good though. I, I, Still, I, man, like when people say the gym's their therapy, it, I fucking it, yep. love it. I'm like, <laughs> how? I can't not, bro. Like, how? like doing doing legs last night with Tyler, I looked forward to it all week. I don't I was, get like, it. I need this leg workout. I dread it. Yep. I I literally. <laughs> From like the day before, I dread it. I'm like, I have to go tomorrow. <laughs> as soon as I leave the gym, you like, I'll give it to you. You n- you never leave the gym in a bad mood. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. But yeah. as soon as I get back in the car and I think, okay, I'm on my way home, yeah. And I s- start making food. I'm like, I gotta go to the gym tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. And and you, no, it's like the process of uh, doing it over and over again. I just, I just need it. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. <laughs> Everyone has to say, or you come to the powerhouse, bro. You go to LA. That's probably why. I go to LA. I go to um, uh, Big Sky. I would, oh, LSA, yeah, Big Sky. I, I like. I like the equipment at Big Sky. Oh, come, come Which home. Big Sky is uh, it? In New Britain. New Britain. Okay, yeah. that's where I first went. Really? But that was like ten years ago. Damn. Oh snap! So that was ten years ago. Yeah. Okay, so how long have you been going to, or have you been working at um, Powerhouse? So I've been working at Powerhouse for a little over a year. A little over a year. Yeah. And have you been working out there? Um, I've been working out there almost 10 years. Almost oh, 10 wow. years. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Changed a lot since then. Changed a lot. I'm yeah. away from the change of colors. I'm praying they change them soon, bro. Yeah. Do you, do you know? Like insider secrets? They say gray, but I don't know. You know, know when? It's gonna like, oh, it needs just, to happen soon. It is different. Honestly, you just like tell Ron, just please <laughs> like tell the owner, tell Frank to like do the it. The colors are rough. It's like bright yellow. It's fucking Easter in like there. Brown. Yeah. 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 It's rough. Cool. I, I'm not a fan of the machines. I, no. think, I think they're all... You guys have some some nice machines. I'll give it to you. Some some machines are very, very specific. They're very targeted. Yeah. And I, I do like that there's a lot of... A lot of benches. Yeah. And there's a lot, a lot of, of like... And there's a lot of machines. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you have like multiple of the same machine, which Big Sky um, doesn't really have the space for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love like the hammer strength, like old school, like style stuff, bro. It's so nice. I feel like I'm Arnold. I, uh, I feel like I'm like really getting a better lift in. Mm. I most of my stuff is free weight, so um, like I'm just I'm always fighting for a squat rack or a yeah, bench. me too. Yep. And it's like yep. The squat racks at our gym, right? They need more. It's not enough. Mm. The four, you think four is enough? It's not enough, bro. And there's uh, always some scrub doing I some random like thing in there. Big so Sky only has two squat racks. They have four now. They have four now. And we're okay. still fighting for them. Okay. Yeah. Well, more people are doing like the main lifts mm-hmm. than they used to. Yeah. More women is that a trend? Are, are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. Why is that? I think TikTok. Oh, yeah. To be honest, mm-hmm. like I think like the mm-hmm. social media trend of like lifting weights in general. Like, I see girls lifting that are, like, 16 years old. Mm-hmm. I wasn't lifting when I was that age, right. but it was different back then. Mm-hmm. Have you um, have you ever been, have you tried sharing content on TikTok? Like, stuff you have to say? Not, no. So, I've yeah. shared, like, fitness videos, but mm-hmm. other than that. Mm. I would give it a shot, because TikTok right now is especially pushing longer form content. So, two to three minute videos. Um, and if 
you were to like share your story out there, I guarantee you, bro, you would get so many more people to comment. Don't know why people feel comfortable commenting on that platform. Really? But yeah, no, if you look at so look at it in terms of like it's people, for awareness. It's for awareness. People literally share the most random stories on TikTok and they go and they blow up. So you can literally build your brand on TikTok. Um, and then take it to IG, build your brand, have the same people follow you over there, yep. and you'll like build up your clientele in a flash because TikTok is the most powerful mm-hmm. platform right now. I think it's because I try to stay off of it that I don't. Do you know what uh, I mean? Because I don't like to, I don't like to get into the habit of like scrolling mm-hmm. on social media, right? And that's all you can really do on TikTok, you know? Mm-hmm. Scroll. I try and follow the motto of produce, no consume. Just produce it, don't consume it. Yeah. So yeah. if you make the TikTok, just, just go on the leave. app, post it, and then and like leave. dip. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Then dip until you post That's another thing. That's what I do. Yeah. That's yeah. Th- like every pretty much every morning I make a post. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot of like, it's another therapy time for me. I'm drinking my coffee. Mm-hmm. I'm like cuddling with my dog. Mm-hmm. I'm writing stuff out, and it's like a journaling entry. Mm-hmm. That's why my posts are so long. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm like, there's some people that actually go through and read my posts, and I'm like, wow, this is yeah. that's nice. Yeah, but um, it's more of like a therapy time for me. Mm-hmm. And gotcha. after I post, I don't give myself enough time to scroll. Mm. If that makes sense. So no, like, it's good. I'm okay. like strategic with like, okay, I gotta post and then i put my phone away get breakfast do what i gotta do gotcha. lock the dogs so a fun fact and we're actually we're gonna implement this next week but um if you want to grow on tiktok and this goes this goes for instagram too instagram is is your more professional setting mm-hmm. uh, if you were connecting with um uh, i i would say people above a certain age bracket mm-hmm. i would you would target Instagram clients, but if if your if your goal is to build awareness first, then TikTok TikTok's your best friend. And if you want to go on TikTok, along with your posts, and you your your one to two minute thing could be whatever you know your usual thing. At the same time, a lot of us, everyone will say, you know what, I'm just gonna like post it and and that's it. Like, yeah. You need, if you want to grow, and and this is where the discipline comes into play, you need to give yourself a window mm-hmm. of like 20 to 30 minutes, believe it or not, where you have to be commenting on other people's stuff. You have to be finding, you have to be browsing and train your own algorithm oh to, to give you more, f- more fitness related <coughs> stuff, to oh give my. you m- more material more content of the type of person that you want to attract Mm -hmm. and then Uh you have to be commenting on similar videos you have to you have to be as engaging as you want people to be with you Uh and so and so algorithms won't push you as much if 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 you're you're not not as active Mm -hmm. as somebody who's posting and then getting people to, to come back onto the platform Okay, so, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Because ulti- that's what they want ultimately. Yeah. Is is people on their platform, so okay. so you going out there, so so your content brings people on the platform. Yeah. You have your own way of notifying people mm-hmm. that you have content to come back on the platform, yeah. and you're also interacting with other people mm-hmm. that are recognizing you mm-hmm. regularly, and coming back to your comments, okay. back to the platform. Okay. So. So to grow on these platforms, your usage has mm-hmm. to also increase. However, the hard part, the discipline is in being more intentional with what you're doing. Okay. And so that should be something that when you're, when you're coming up with your social media plan for the future, mm-hmm. you got to incorporate like 20 to 30 minutes of it a day. Okay. And so no, that makes unfortunately sense. can't be like a complete cutout. Yep. However, it could be an intentional use. Okay, what are other people doing? Mm-hmm. What are some trends that people mm-hmm. are liking? Mm-hmm. Okay, and and what is some feedback that you can give in the community for people that are commenting on that s- those same types of videos? Okay, a little something for you if you want yeah. if you want to try. Yeah, but That's we're gonna try. implement that next week. Our our TikTok is gonna be a far more aggressive approach. Okay, where we're gonna shoot for like five to seven videos a day. Wow. And and it it would be wise to have somebody that is on there regularly just yeah. commenting 
and, and reaching people and, and starting interesting discussions. So that's something we're going to implement in the TikTok. And for like our business model, like we're trying to get people to like, obviously we want to like teach like wholesaling, real estate and all that, that type of stuff. And ultimately we're trying to funnel them like into a community basically and like have it so we can like build something with these people and like eventually monetize it down the line and kind of like share our knowledge. But some of the content is going to be like, um, and you'll kind of include this in the cast. It's for like people, like people who like will follow us eventually or watching yeah. this. Like um, some of it even includes like just like flashy content, like showing off what you do have, like your results. Because at the end of the day, it sucks, but like people want to see, it, especially yeah. on TikTok, because like people go there for clickbaity, yeah, quick yeah. fucking dopamine hits. You know what yeah. I mean? So mm -hmm. when you have that contest, you have like say three videos of like really educational stuff, mm -hmm. and then like scattered between those three, you have three more that are like, um. I went from this to this mm -hmm. or yeah. like you have like flashier content. Like this is the life so you could have if you did this. Um, and you, the, having a healthy balance of both of those will like blow you up. And it's because it's a part of the value equation, right? People want, people want you to guarantee their results. Mm -hmm. People want a higher perceived likelihood of success, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So do you have, do you practice what, what you you're preach? preaching? Right. Mm -hmm. Pe people are constantly looking for that. And so so if you can show that off and because, uh, uh, like you said, that's what people want. Mm -hmm. People want to have this body that they can show off however they want to yeah. to walk around proudly. Mm -hmm. You know, do you give that good example? Do you give do you show people the example of, OK, you know what? I went from this to this mm -hmm. and, and it allows me to be this, be this free person in the world. Yeah. Do you show that? And, 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 you know, when you talk about freely, how and, and what areas of your life it's improved and made better yeah. and, and like double down guys, like it's worth it. Yeah. So increasing that likelihood of, of success. And you're also showing that, that you, you are what you preach. Mm -hmm. People need that. That is hundred percent. And so, yeah. And then, like, use Instagram for, like, the more, like, knowledge, knowledge content. Knowledge content, because it doesn't, the trendy stuff doesn't go as well on Instagram. Um, at least what we noticed. It's, like, more, like, knowledge-based, like, driving, building the community over there. Because you can have a TikTok community, but, like, no one's mind, no one's attention span to go on TikTok is long enough for you to actually, like, funnel them to get written to a client, like, a customer. So, funneling them back to your IG or your main pages, you can then give them more knowledge. But then you can then funnel them to become a customer or a client or anything like that. Um... For example, um, again, we don't have to put this in the podcast. Um, there's a kid. So everything I'm about to say, just cut. Nah, um, let's include it. There's a kid. <laughs> They're valid. Okay. I think it's valid advice. Yeah, so for, for example, so there's a kid that um, we don't know personally, but um, a buddy of ours knows him, and he generates three hundred. He's 24 years old. He generates $300,000 a month net um, of um, like cash flow through his business, and he's a wholesaler, and this man doesn't really wholesale. He sent out a couple of deals, but his main business model is uh, is a um basically selling a course and a mentorship, yeah. Um, uh, charging people a subscription model a month, and he has like four to five thousand people in there mm -hmm. thinking they're gonna learn. Um, and wow. we looked into his stuff, and he provides, technically speaking, and if you're watching this and you hypothetically think that you're the person I'm talking about, no, no hate, you're killing it, do your thing. Um, but you don't know who we're talking about. But yeah, no, they're they're not gonna know. Um, <laughs> but. If you look at, look at their content, they make no valuable content whatsoever and their community is completely lost and people forget to unsubscribe. This man's raking in over 300K a month yeah. based off that alone. There are scrubs. There are people, um, mean people, yeah. people mm -hmm. that take advantage um, that do exist. But those people will never, they'll never stay in business. They won't. No, no fail. And if you, if all of his content... He mixes, he does that that tip, that trick. He mixes in some of the educational shit, but yeah. a lot of it's the flashy stuff on a boat. Driving. Even his educational stuff is very fake. Yeah, there's a so video fake. where he was he was um, on a we're we're ranting, we're yeah, we're just yeah. venting to you <laughs> yeah. at this point. Um, so not saying it, I'm not letting this person see this. So this person, like, <laughs> he'll he has a video where he goes through a conversation with the seller, yeah, where he's trying to lock it down, yeah, and. Uh, I'm so petty. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I watched the entire video, and like once once the guy he calls the guy, mm -hmm. he picks up and he starts to get a little red. Mm -hmm. And I was like, interesting. He's starting to get a little nervous, mm -hmm. um, and he's trying to go through the conversation. And he's he's like, 
gasping for air a little bit mm-hmm. and i'm like this guy's this guy clearly doesn't mm-hmm. do this yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. i'm so petty i was like I, I i had to comment i was like interesting i was like bro why are you getting so nervous <laughs> <laughs> commented oh <laughs> Marcos. it was like god dude it was an, it was like an older video i doubt he's gonna respond this guy gets so many like he has so many fucking views but he preaches his entire business model this is what this is what we're saying like to like if you put it out there someone will buy it because yeah. this this kid's entire big he's 20 he's already 24 making 300 bands a month 348 exactly a month of like why profit. do we know that maybe we just we just do we just do yeah just we have a, we Slight, have a slightly irritated we, we have a source um but no <laughs> well, but like the same thing with like the fitness influencers with like the booty builder yeah mm-hmm. right and i bought one of those it's tough when i was younger yeah mm-hmm. and i went through and i'm like this is bullshit it's like, why did i buy this you, mm-hmm. you feel like it doesn't after. work mm-hmm. yeah like it's like mm-hmm. eat more calories do these exercises Mm-hmm. That was it. But technically speaking, think of it like this: they c- it's not a scam because they're just telling you what you could find online. Yes. They're just selling you the information yes. from their perspective. Yes. So technically speaking, like no one can say if it's legit or not because that's their experience that they're selling to you. Yes. Yeah. So if it works, it works. It doesn't it doesn't you, so you do the, literally the exact same thing, and you just monetize it. And that's what people are doing nowadays to make a fuckload of money. Um. So we're just gonna do the same thing. Except we're actually gonna provide value to people. We're actually gonna like build a community. Like, we're actually like present. Um, and active because we have the experience we have like a whole portfolio a whole portfolio we've done like a boatload of fucking deals like we've done all these things we can actually provide value to these people not lie to them like like this guy who's done a few because we go to like a lot of networking events so we talk to like a lot of other investors and no one's heard of this guy not a single soul has heard of this guy no. never seen him in an event never seen him anywhere but you see him on the boat yeah you'll see him in his range rover you'll see him on all these different things on all these different like categories and it's just a lot of flex a lot of flexing is money of what you can get with wholesaling He's like, we do 100K in deals a month. I just know you don't. You not do 100K in deals yeah. a month. No, sir. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that rant's over. But but what he did do successfully was post consistently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and every single post, you learn something from every single post you make. Oh, huh. mm-hmm. so and, that's... and he just, okay, you know what? Try post a couple times a day. Okay, it kind of did well. I'm going to change it. Or you even try it for a few days. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, not much difference. All right. What could I change? Okay. Not much difference. What could I change? Okay. These videos saw a spike. Why don't I do more of it? Or what else could I cut out to further double down on this? And then it's just slowly and but steadily you're learning the content, the content game. And, you know, it eventually leads to building a platform. If, and again, you stay. You stay relevant if the stuff you put out is good. Yeah. And it sounds like you have a pretty good mission statement. <coughs> so, 100%. Yeah. And, and to have survived a car crash and to survive... Um, I wanted to touch on depression a little bit. Mm-hmm. What's, your, what's your experience with depression? I've been there, for sure. Um, I never knew really what depression was until my car accident. Really? That was like mm-hmm. my lowest point ever. Um, I think because, so my car accident happened in September, um, mm-hmm. and I've always been one to like, during the winter, blo- like I've had the winter blues, right. like, yeah. like we all have right now in Connecticut. Um, mm-hmm. but I think because I couldn't do what I love to do and keep progressing in the gym, I was just at a really low point. Um, I sat in a recliner, I drank cups of coffee. Yeah. I didn't know what else to do. I couldn't even walk my dogs. So oh, it was yeah. like. It was to the point where, because physically I could walk my little dog, but I felt bad leaving yeah. the other dog at home. I was like, I can't walk one dog and not the other. Mm-hmm. So I would just sit there all day and do nothing. Mm. And that was like a low, mm. a low point. Huh. So what were the steps you would take to kind of start climbing out of that? I would say keeping up with like the whole journaling um, that was a big thing for me, like mm. writing down my feelings and everything. Um, also trying to find like the little wins in mm-hmm. each day. Like, oh, mm. I got up today. I saw the sun today. Like mm. little stuff like that, mm-hmm. that you really like when you're at a low point, you have to start from the bottom. So you're not like right now I'm going to the gym, I'm lifting weights. I'm like up here. But I always remember, like, there's going to be a point in time where, like, a car accident could happen again. Mm-hmm. Anything could happen. You Anything. get tested in mm-hmm. some way. Yeah. Tests, 
mm-hmm. come in all different ways, shapes, yes. and forms. Yes. And so you might be up here today. But you and could then be down here. Exactly. Too. Something could happen. Or just like people go through moods. You know what I mean? And I know Tyler hates the word mood. Like he's convinced, my buddy that I live with, he's convinced that moods are not a thing. It's just emotions. And I was like, technically it's the same thing. Mm. But anyway, so this I man's, this right? It, yeah, it's, this, yeah. This man's like philosophy is great. Anyways, so but there's like times that like you just feel so like you just feel like you wake up and you're like man i'm a piece of shit today you know you just feel bad about yourself yeah and looking back on like the highs that you do have at least for me i feel like like you're it's gonna pass just a season yeah that 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 reminds me yeah um you know what does he say tyler says that 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 there's no such thing as moods or something he doesn't believe in moods what's your what's your what's your answer to somebody that that says that depression isn't real like what do you say to that that's, I mean, I'm super open-minded. That's the other thing. So mm-hmm. in my mind, I can't understand like how someone doesn't believe in like depression or anxiety or, mm-hmm. um, but I've had this battle with my fiance cause he's like, Oh, anxiety is not a real thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I have anxiety. Yeah. Really? So yeah. I try to just exp- like further explain like what I'm feeling to him. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. how do you do that? How do you? communicate that to try to reach him can you show us what that looks like i would say because a lot of people deal with this yeah. at least I, f- I feel like you know they try to communicate that oh you know i i feel depressed i feel this i feel mm-hmm. or, or i have adhd and a lot of like people are like what my people my parents and their mm-hmm. generation you told them oh we have adhd and they'll be like what yeah. What did yeah. you say? Yeah, yeah, they don't. So, so a lot of people don't believe in autism either. Mm-hmm. How do you? Yeah, right. How do you have that conversation? What does that look like? I would say just for like, all I can say is further explaining how you feel when it's happening. Hmm. Like if mm-hmm. I'm experiencing well, so with the car accident, I definitely have like some PTSD that comes up. And mm-hmm. to this day, mm-hmm. when my fiance is driving. And we're like close call with anything. Mm-hmm. I'm like hold. I'm like holding on. <laughs> and he and he's like, why are you still doing this? And I'm like, it's it makes sense because mm-hmm. it's something that I experienced. It's not something that's ever gonna go away. Mm. Um, you don't think it's ever gonna go away? No, because it's been over two years since the car accident, and I still to this day like if it's a close call, my whole body tenses up. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I've worked through it. Like I've gone to therapy. I've tried everything to try to like calm Mm. my nervous system. Um, But I think our nervous system also reacts like to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's a saying. (coughs) Excuse me. There's a saying that says time heals all wounds. Do you believe that over time you'll start to say if he's falling too close to somebody or like there's a close call you that you won't feel like that or do you think it's just like maybe as severe as severe or be as severe. But interesting i think that it's always going to be there interesting there is so i'll give you an example so one time i was this is when i live in hartford i was cooking and um i dropped a pan on the stove and shelby was next to me no i, I dropped a mug or something. salt shaker you said yeah salt <laughs> shaker that's what it was i dropped a salt shaker on the on the stove and um it made a loud bang because it was like a glass top with yeah. a glass piece oh, of yeah. like a glass salt shakers mm-hmm. i made like and she like like she got like she jumped and she, uh, for a second, she was, like, in a complete fear because in her past, with her, her stepdad was abusive. He was, yeah. wasn't the best guy. Um, so that having that reaction, she thought I slammed it and, like, I was going to, like, get into that, like, get into a mood and start yelling at her or something like that. But in reality, I just dropped a slot shaker. Yeah. So that, I, I feel like that she's been out, moved out of there for years now. Yeah. Um, this is was, this was also a couple years ago. but So I, she's much better about now. Now I can, like... No, nothing happens. She'll, she'll yell at me if anything. Um, if I drop anything <laughs> and it breaks, if it breaks something, I'm the one who's in trouble. But love you, Shelby. Um, oh yeah, for, for real. So now, <laughs> now, that, now that she's pregnant, like her moves are over the place. Like after I do one thing out of line, I'm get, I'm hearing about it. But um, mm. no. So I feel like there's definitely that like PTSD and that anxiety that can um sit with somebody for a long period of time because if it traumatizes you enough, like you said, your body will try to protect itself. Yes. So I believe it'll always be there, because mm-hmm. um, there's definitely still things from my childhood that I still like feel triggered by, mm-hmm. um, depending on the situation, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to mental illness. Mm-hmm. Just because both of my parents 
but or someone makes a comment about it I'm yeah in, i'm initially like inside i'm hostile like i'm really? boiling it, yeah ooh, like okay. people say like oh that's so like bipolar you know, like they throw out like the stereotypes yeah. mm-hmm. but so, I and you're like back. what do you mean yeah, <laughs> yeah. like i yeah. hold myself back and i'm gotcha. like okay these people are not mm-hmm. educated in mental mm-hmm. illness so it's understandable so but, yeah mm-hmm. how, how what pointers would you give to somebody when they want to communicate that or or when somebody is is as like stubborn or strong-headed on something how do you how do you approach that conversation so i'm not confrontational whatsoever Mm -hmm. um Mm. i internalize a lot of things so i i feel like i say a lot of things inside that i don't (laughs) say out like Mm. i don't like voice it out loud i've always counted before I say anything. Mm-hmm. Really? I kind of like calm myself down before. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Or if I need to step away from like an argument or something, I'll be like, give me a second. Like I need to step that away. That shows a lot of maturity. I've never heard that before. That, yeah, but that's think, something else. But I yeah. think too, like because of my job helping students with special needs, mm-hmm. I've always been prompted to tell them like I need space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I've learned through prompting to them mm-hmm. Like that, you can. It's okay to say you need space. Mm-hmm. Like we'll reconvene. Like when we're both huh. in a better so, space. Interesting. Yeah. How has that helped you with your relationships today? Do you notice yourself using those tools in your day to day? As just once in a while. Uh, every all the time. Really. Yeah. Interesting. And how would you react to somebody say at the gym who walked up to you? Um, because I know that there's a long, a lot of, a lot of strong personalities that oh, are not yeah. just strong people, but a lot of strong personalities at our gym. Is there? Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of folks with like a lot of beliefs. Okay. Um, for lack of better words, I guess. Like, you could like say. what? Oh man. Oh man. I, uh, on the spot. On the spot. I, don't, I didn't mean to. No, let me think. I think just people in the gym in general have stronger personalities. They're lifting weights. Mm-hmm. They're mm. in the heat of the moment. Yeah. Jeez. You get in their way or you're using something they want mm. and they overreact like mm-hmm. right away. Like their, their first initial reaction is to like run to the front desk and tell me, Yeah. which I'm not going to like, I'm not like, Why? Gonna, really? Like, yeah. If you're going to be that loud, do something about it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But How often does it happen? Someone complains at the front desk. I feel like it's rare, Yeah. but it does happen. Interesting. It does happen. Huh. It's like, Yeah. Interesting. Okay. But I think the adrenaline of working out mm-hmm. and then someone gets in your way or whatever, it's just the heat of the moment. Mm-hmm. People don't know how to just like breathe. S- step and back. Like mm-hmm. So how would you handle somebody who were to say to you, say at the gym, um, a lot of like emotions, uh, a lot of adrenaline. How would you handle somebody who would walk up, if you were in a conversation, you were saying your experience and they're like, oh, I don't believe in that. Or why do you feel like that? That's not real. How would you react to somebody saying that? Um, and would you still, despite having like such a strong belief towards it, would you still keep your composure, or would you just like let them, let them know your opinion? How'd that look? I would definitely keep my composure. Um, everyone always comments on how calm I stay, mm-hmm. regardless of like what the situation is. Like a mm-hmm. kid could be throwing a chair across the room, and I'm just like, it's happened. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, it is what it is. Like yeah. I don't like to react right in the moment of anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I always tell people, like, your opinion is your opinion. Your belief is your belief. Mm-hmm. My mm-hmm. belief is my belief. So I just believe that everyone has different opinions. Yeah. And I think going into the world with an open mind and mm-hmm. thinking, like, everyone believes, in, everyone has a different perception of what they're experiencing. Mm. Like, we're all experiencing something different by sitting here. Right? Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's like the crazy. open mind of just like everyone experiences life mm-hmm. based on their past and mm-hmm. what they perceive things. Huh. Yeah. That's so even if someone disagrees with me, I'm just like, okay, I get it. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause they have their, in, in a way they have the reason to disagree. There's yes. more they to have, the picture. Yeah. yeah they had Gosh. walks of life that they went through. Um, mm-hmm. huh. s- I don't like to argue. I'm not an argumentative. Yeah. Huh. I don't see the benefit of it. That's a huge, like, yeah. yeah. Pro. That's mm-hmm. a huge. That's. And does that huh. does that help your relationship a lot? Because like, yes. I feel like a lot of people will, um, when they disagree, they'll get in like heated fights, or it'll be like a long like debate between like two partners. Do you feel that's like helped your relationship, like, and that's helped like you guys get to where you are today to engage a future wedding, 
Definitely. All about that. Because we don't really argue, which sounds weird. No, no, it's good. Yeah, we're the same way. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's like, I think we're both just so comfortable with each other that mm-hmm. our conversations, like, if we do disagree on something, we're just kind of like, okay, let's mm-hmm. give it a little bit of time, mm-hmm. come back. We compromise a lot. That's good. Um, but we're both very similar. Like, we both don't go out and drink. We're not, like, party people. Mm-hmm. I think you have to find your person that, s- like, ha- lives a similar lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And we met at the gym, so. It's perfect. It's oh. like a, yeah. And he seems know. like a good balance from, because I don't, I don't talk to him much, but he's just, like, a very mellow. Yeah. Just does his thing. He goes yep. there, lifts, lifts with his boys, and it's like, yep. makes it happen. Yeah. That's cool. Hmm. That's yeah. cool. It's interesting. Um, That's really cool. Right? And I agree, you do need to find somebody who fits that lifestyle because mm-hmm. if Shelby, I also don't go out a lot. Like, like Marcus and I have to go to like a thing tonight, and like I was, I don't even truth. No offense, I <laughs> truthfully don't really want to go, but yep, like I'm still gonna show right, show my <laughs> face. Um, and like, but for, I we don't go out like Shelby and I at least for, like us we don't go out frequently. Like we don't go to clubs, we don't drink, we don't um like to socialize a lot. So like if we 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 go somewhere. Like you said, the social battery dies. Yeah. Like yes. really quick. Yeah. So, like we can be out at dinner with somebody and it'll be like eight thirty. I'm like, man, I'm ready yep. to call it at night, <laughs> like <laughs> trying to go to bed. We'll come home, we'll play Smash, like Smash Bros, play a game together, watch anime, go to bed. Because yep. that sounds like such a like a better time mm-hmm. after like working like all day and build like building our stuff than mm-hmm. going out and like getting intoxicated to feel like shit the next day when I can't yes. like go lift with a clear head. So Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. Mm-hmm. And hearing that is actually, I, I think, voicing that mm-hmm. is is uh, is really beneficial for a lot of people, especially today, because no one wants to be wrong today. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, I know. For and, sure. and it's, it's very I'm reassuring. I'm the type of person that, like, if I don't know the answer to something, I will find the answer. Mm-hmm. And I've mm-hmm. never, somehow I've never been... A, afraid of being like like if a client asks me like oh so what if i do this before this and i don't know the answer i'll be like i don't know i will research it i will figure it out mm-hmm. huh. yeah that actually I, makes you a lot more likable too yeah mm-hmm. right because i don't like huh. feeling like the type of person that knows everything mm-hmm. too like mm-hmm. i love to research all i do is listen to podcasts mm-hmm. of like health related huh. but interesting so for for people out there and especially like young women, what are some sources or, or some, some podcasts that you would recommend? Mind Pump Media. Mind Pump Media. Yep. Really? Yes. Who's it hosted by? So there's a bunch of guys that do it together. Sal, um, Andrew. I can't think of all their names right now. But they're they're trainers out mm-hmm. in California mm-hmm. and they Ended up, so they started as personal trainers in gyms mm-hmm. when they were in their low 20s. And then they ended up like coming together, starting a podcast. Mm-hmm. Now they have their own business. They, they sell workout programs. Yeah. They're always branching out. They're sponsored by people. They have like a really good following. Yeah. Mm. Um, but in my mid 20s, I bought like one of their programs and I was like, wow, this is actually like yeah good. A Works. legit th- oh. yeah mm-hmm. yeah so i bought like a few of their programs and they've definitely helped me with just like balancing like overtraining versus not working out enough like mm-hmm. it's consistency but you don't want to overdo it that's so true and there's a lot of people go to the gym every single day yeah and that's not it's not beneficial it's not good for you i feel well, what is your ideal split like what is your schedule to do like what's your preferred on, on and off for me it's six one sometimes this week it's just a five two what is your preferred like split, and what do you think is overtraining and undertraining? So I intuitively train now, which sounds really weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, so I, I generally do full body. Mm-hmm. So I'll mm-hmm. do like the main lifts. Like I'm always squatting or front squatting, deadlifting, benching, overhead pressing, just all the main stuff, and then I throw in accessory stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I do mostly full body, mm-hmm. so I try to do one exercise per muscle group. Four hmm. sets, maybe th- only three sets. Like each day. Yeah. I've in, I've heard someone who did that. It's yeah. interesting. How do you like it? Does it work? I think the recovery is better, mm-hmm. um, just because you're not targeting. Like, say you target leg day, 
then the next two days your legs are fried deleted uh, and it's so hard to like get back to be like oh i'm gonna do leg day again this week because then you're fried from yeah gotcha. so i'll squat and then i'll go and do like bench press or mm-hmm. i'll go and do like a barbell back row or mm. yeah i like that yeah i that was my routine split um during this was when well it was only maybe four years ago right in from like high school actually like end of high school like first two years of college Mm -hmm. my my splits were full body yeah but it was because we were so active and and the the sports i was in were just very very demanding and and i felt great after full body Mm -hmm. and i would wake up the next day and i'd feel just as great like there was not a time you would catch me throughout the week where i didn't feel like i could compete the next day yeah and 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 i missed that yeah doing those types of workouts I, I i enjoyed that actually and because we had our entire team with us and it was like and 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 you know that ended and now i'm by myself and i completely mm-hmm. hate it's it hard, yeah, right it's hard. but um but I, I am a fan of that and mm-hmm. so so you would advocate for that yes full body over verse over doing like a leg day buys and interesting back. like you know how people mm. split up like back and buys chest mm-hmm. and tries mm-hmm legs and then leg another leg day hmm. i feel like a lot of people do like two leg <laughs> days and then two upper body days mm-hmm. yeah okay and then recycle i'm sure they each have their phase mm-hmm. for somebody i'm going to paint an, a client for you mm-hmm. let's say um like a mom mm-hmm. ask him for a mom you know if if their if their goal is to get back or to get into the gym they have like rough experience but the goal is to get into the gym, start getting used to everything. They want to start becoming active, regular gym goers. Would your approach be like more full body or, It'd or be would more you full say, body. And, and how would you kind of begin to break it down for somebody who wants to get into the gym? I would say start with once a week, dedicating one day a week that you're going to the gym. Mm. And then once you build that habit, then you add a second day mm. and it's full body each day. So interesting you get, gotcha. yeah because a lot of people like the new year's people they're like oh i'm gonna go five days a week so you see them there monday through friday right For and they look two weeks. exhausted yeah. so they're draining themselves they're probably mm. draining themselves at work from their relationships mm. they probably mm. can't you know like they're not mm. you want your workout to work in to your lifestyle mm. like you want your workout to benefit you at work with your partner gotcha. mm-hmm. You don't want it to take away from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So that's a really good thing. You can like push to people because 90 was it 91% of people who like to do this resolution fail. Mm -hmm. 95% of those people are like ones who want to go to the gym. Yeah. And so many of them. That's how the Planet Fitness whole business model. Um, This is kind of sidetracking it, but Planet Fitness their business model is not to get people who want to go to the gym to go to the gym. Their whole business, that's why if you notice, they don't have any heavy weights. They only have Smith machines. They don't have mm-hmm. anything like particular that actual bodybuilders would want yeah. or people who like, take it seriously would want. And they have a bunch of cardio. They have um, they have what, pizza on some Fridays or bagels yeah. or donuts. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, right? Dude, this, is, this is their model. So at the end of the day, they'll get you to sign up for a buck. Yeah. And it's 10 bucks a month. They know you're not going to come. So at the end of the day, you'll go the, the January, you'll get like hundreds of people to sign up to their gym. Millions of people sign up to their gyms. And then you, they won't. Um, that's my phone. That's what it was. I heard it. Be, no, I heard it's it my phone. Oh, it's okay. okay. I thought it was it's vibrating okay. on there. I was like trying to. Th- um, so, but they'll get all the people to sign up, but they don't actually. They know they're not gonna go, and so, and they make it a pain for you to cancel. At least they used to. Now you can cancel yes. online, but they used to make it such a pain for you to cancel. And so that's how they make their money because yeah. they know that yeah. these people aren't going to, they're not going to be serious. Yep. They're going to go to get the bagels and pizzas on Fridays yep. and they're not going to take it serious enough to like actually see results. So they keep their membership. And then when they think about canceling, then, um, another, it's going to be close to new year. So I'm like, you know what, this year I'm going to do it. And yep. so in October, they're like, no, I'm going to start on January 1st. I'm going to start going to the gym again. And then the cycle the repeats. Cycle. And that's yeah. the whole, that's the whole wow. model. It's fucking genius. It's there. That's why they're so profitable because they don't invest in actual equipment or actual things people want. They invest in the cheapest cardio machines, the mm-hmm. cheapest shit you can get. Mm-hmm. And then they run a fuckload of ads. And That's then, sickening. Huh? That is sick. Oh, think about it from a business standpoint. They make billions of dollars mm. off of that model. It's crazy. I get upset. I was upset for the first like month. 
uh, New Year's going going to Big Sky because mm-hmm. exactly that a bunch mm-hmm. of middle aged people yeah yeah they're Coming they're back. in there they're just I'm like just taking up space bro yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know they're not gonna be oh serious uh, like that guy we talked to at, at our gym when he was like going out about it, I think when I was talking at the desk um he was like yeah all these like new kids are here doing their thing mm-hmm. um they're, you know they're not gonna stay and yeah he was right yes yeah, yeah he was right they half of them didn't stay Man. so it's interesting to me and it's good to see the ones that did. You yes. see them consistently, like especially the ones that like really want to lose weight. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see them consistently going, mm-hmm. consistently making. Fun. There's one guy, um, a little bit more heavy set, and but I see him. I see him every time I'm there. He's there. He's on that treadmill. He's cranking it out. Big baggy T-shirt. So I'm just, good for mm-hmm. you, man. Yeah. So those are some of the craziest success stories. Oh, for sure. For I sure. I, and I, I don't, I don't, I really, I can't grasp how people do it. I give those people so much credit. You're, you're already a strong ass dude, bro. You know how fucking strong Marcus is for like go, clear, carrying roofing supplies with those oh, ladders, yeah. bro. This man, fucking yoked. But like, hey, the gym. It's a different strength, yeah. though. It's a functional strength. Which I, I think is what I liked about the full the full body routine. Yeah. Is that you're constantly ready to go. Yeah. It's a fact. Um, but, but so I saw her coming across the four. Um, closing thoughts, ideas, yeah. questions, uh, comments, concerns. Real f- fun questions um do you have any stories and not maybe like horror stories or dramatic stories working with the kids anything crazy go on anything you know <laughs> the, the, the type of stuff <laughs> is there anything you could share maybe like one or two stuff that you can't make up um I'm trying to think of one that's like so i used to have a student that i worked with that he loved to work with me because I was like the fun one that was like mm. engaging. Cause that's the thing is that not everyone that goes into this field are like super engaging and mm. like with mm. the kids, sometimes they're there for the paycheck, which is like really sad mm. to say, but mm. this kid, whenever I would leave on my lunch break, he would destroy the classroom. So what I do you mean destroy, destroy like everything was on the ground. Everything was swiped. He's hitting everyone. So it's kind oh, of he's like knocking people out. Yeah. Yes. Jesus. Yes. So I would come back to like have to like de escalate him and like put out the fire essentially. Yeah. But that happens a lot. Like there's a lot of destroying and Interesting. How did you deal with that? Did you just like stop and he's listened or did, was it like a little more like complicated? I usually stop and listen. Mm-hmm. Cause the student also came from like a trauma background where like I had to be extra careful with mm-hmm. like anything I said to him. But then it's kind of like I came from a trauma background. So I'm like, you understand it's it. easier gotcha. for me to understand. Gotcha. Gotcha. And people know when you understand them and when you're like mm-hmm. a genuinely helpful person versus like mm. you're trying to just get the job done. Interesting. But I've wow. been stuck in bathrooms with poop everywhere. Like it's been. Oh yeah. man! Really? Yes. I. Oh yeah. Yep. I that was, was that was probably my tipping point where I was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Poop That's everywhere. What happened? So the student had IBS. Oh. I'm and sorry. he would end up having behaviors doing that. But this was back when I worked for like an after school program too, mm-hmm. and I was like his one on one that would go after school. What's IBS? Irritable, Irritable bowel syndrome. syndrome. Yeah, so it's, like, not solid. And he would have behaviors doing that. Like, that would be a part of his behavior. Wow. And I was by myself with him, and then he had to go to the bathroom, and then it was just everywhere. That's and I had to, like, walkie someone to help. But then I'm like, how are they even going to help me with this? Like, it was just such a... Seriously? Yeah. Yep. And it was your job to clean it up? You just, like, Tech, I mean, there were custodians, but it was like I had to like clean him too. So it wasn't oh. just like it wasn't. Jeez. So even if I did like clean him and get out of there, it's like there's still stuff everywhere, so he could still touch it. Yeah. You are. So just that's like a horror. What yeah. a woman, bro. Yeah. That's too yeah. much. <laughs> Rupert. I, well, I've been through yeah, a lot. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I could any not any do that. fights? Have you ever had to pull kids apart? Oh yeah, that happens. Yeah. Huh. That's the thing. Yeah. Interesting. How bad does it get? Like fists flying everywhere? Or it's more like. Anybody ever try to fight you or some of the other teachers? I usually am not the one to get fought, which is oh. good. But <laughs> You're not the one. Yeah. Yeah. Who is? I'm usually the ones that aren't nice to the kids, like yeah. the ones that are there for the paycheck, yeah. I would huh. say. Yeah. Interesting. They just get, they're getting socked hey, what's by the, the other kids. What's, what's the ratio of that? Like people who like actually care versus people want to be there just like to catch a bag and go home? I'd say half and half. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other question is, 
How long have these people been doing it? <coughs> that half, particularly. That is kind of just there for the paycheck. You think people, like... Probably c- for longer, so they're kind of just, like... They're over it. They're, yeah. Right? Mm. Like, I, I can't imagine somebody doing that forever. That's no. got to be hard. It's hard. It's mm. a hard job. It's mentally and physically taxing. Yeah. And emotionally, because you got to, like, deal with these people and, like, get inside their mm-hmm. lives and clean up their shit, literally. Yeah. Yep. So... Wow. Yeah, it's like... But physically, too, like, I feel like if you do, do the job long enough, just like you're in manual labor, like, it keeps you younger because mm-hmm. it keeps you moving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not like a desk job where you're just sitting there behind a computer. That's fair. Gotcha. Very true. Yeah. Okay. So, in a way, like, as stressful as it is and how hard as, as it can be, like, it keeps you moving and feeling younger and mm-hmm. you're helping someone all day. So, it's like you're not... Mm-hmm. You're not aging, aging in, yeah. in the way that, like, my peer, like, an average 30 year old isn't. Yeah, and that's funny because, uh, especially Americans, we age really we, quickly. Yes. Uh, it's also in our food. Like, our country the processed yeah, food. kills huh. us in a way. Uh, that's why people, like, a lot of, like, people from Europe and, like, other foreign countries, they'll come here and um, they continue to eat clean and they'll be in their 90s and you won't even know. Like, we're do- I'm doing a deal. Um, with uh, well, not uh, not doing a deal. I wanted to do a deal. We didn't get the deal with a lady in Stanford, and um, she's 88. She's still an, like an active investor, yeah. and I was like, I got in the elevator. This was a condo in this building, um, and she, I was like, um, she's like, who do you think we're gonna be meeting here? I bet you thought you're gonna meet some y- nice young lady, and I was like, nah, no, nah. you know, like a day past four. She's like, I'm 88. And I was like, you're 88. And I like, stopped. She's like, yeah, we're doing it all my life. And I was like, what? Wow. Oh, my God. She you have w- to ask her what her daily routine is. I should have. She <laughs> just, like, she just kills wow. it. She's definitely outside walking. She, she is. She, like, goes, she takes care of all her units by herself. So that's crazy. That's and she, um, and she was like, she's like, if you don't buy this, I'm just going to rent it to somebody else. I'm going to keep doing it. And I was like, you, you should really just retire. I didn't yeah. say that. But and I made her a pretty Aww. generous offer. And she's like, nope, I'm going to, I want this price. And if not, I'm going to rent it. And I was like, oh. she knows, she knows, she knows. she'll just keep doing it. She's been doing and I was like, I just can't is. get to that number lady. Like, oh, um, but yeah, she's wow. going to fix it herself and rent it. So I was like, all right. Wow. So we good for it. her. Yeah. Good for, right. Good for, man. But, um, that's cool. Um, last thing where, what do you guys do for fun? What do you and Taylor do as like a, as like a, a date or like to hang out? What do you guys think is like fun? Mm. Hiking. Hiking. Well, I don't know if he thinks it's fun, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, let's go for a hike somewhere with the dogs. That's yeah. usually, um, we like to go up to New Hampshire. His mm-hmm. grandparents have a cottage up there. Really? Mm. So we like go on the lake. We do like the jet ski. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty fun. Where? In New Hampshire. Is it like it's their Moscow jet skis Malik. or? Oh, yeah. that's oh. sick. Dang. You heard jet skis. It's you get beautiful. Excited. <laughs> it's nice. Because nice. I don't think there's a place you could do. I mean, there's a beach. Um, Misqu- I think it's either Mesquamica or something, yeah. but, but, you but they can't don't like, not in the do anything there. Yeah. Man, there's yeah. not many lakes in Connecticut that you can just like, like I know people own boats mm-hmm. and then they go on the lake with their boat, but I feel like jet skiing isn't as popular in Connecticut. Yeah, the lakes aren't that big. They're not mm-hmm. big at all. Yeah, no. small. Man, where does one have to go? <laughs> To yeah. get on a jet ski, like yeah, I, sure. I, I'm just <laughs> 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 sure a big lake, sure, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. Um, were you gonna ask another question? So anything yeah. outdoors? I like anything outdoors? Anything outdoors? Yeah. Interesting. Other than the winter, I don't ski or snowboard or anything. Oh, no. which with you. you'll never see me on a no. ski. No. Bro, no. Luke's, he's like, he's like, yeah, I no. take you skiing sometimes, and I'm like, yeah, man. yeah, right. No. I'm like, man, I don't think so. I don't want to do that. Bro. Not even if you paid me, bro. For real? Oh yeah, it's like um. It's not only for me. I feel no. you. Um, cool. what are you gonna ask? Um, real quick, I saw on Taylor's profile, um, he has some pictures of, of, a, of a motorcycle of a nice. He stalks. Ni- I'm just saying. Nice yeah. little out there. Nice little Yamaha. Just so everyone knows, yes. um, he stalks anyone we interview. So <laughs> I'll 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 look at some some. Uh, I'll just look at your Instagrams to see if there's anything we can kind of dig at. But um, yeah. So he has he has motorcycles. Yes. Is it just one? Just one. Just one. Okay. How do, he, how do you feel about that? So that's when I first met him, he had a Yamaha R1. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is so exciting. Like, this is great. Yeah. Like, I want to go on the back of it. So uh-huh. we would go places. He would go fast. Like, mm-hmm. I was just like, this is awesome. Yeah. But then after my car accident, I'm like, oh my. I yeah. can't. Yeah. yeah. So I have been on the bike since, mm-hmm. but it wasn't the same. Not the same. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it, but if there wasn't other people on the road. Understandable. Gotcha. It's like. Yeah. If okay. I see any th- any close calls, I'm like, this is too. But yeah. he races it now, so he goes to a track. Good for him. Yeah. Until like that's okay. Pretty cool. Do you feel comfortable with him riding? Like, if he goes riding with his boys, if that's yes. a thing, you feel comfortable. Yep. Okay. Do you f- have you found things that either of you like to do that maybe you guys aren't on board with each other, and does that happen? And how do you have that conversation? I would say the only thing is the amount of time I've spent in the gym. That's the only thing that he's like, why are you in the gym so much? Or why do you take so long with your workout? Hmm. So he's more like Mm -hmm. quick workout in and out. But what happens with me is like I do my workout, but then I'm like talking to people that I know. Yeah, And everyone knows you because you work there too. Yeah, so So I take Mm -hmm. longer. So that's the only thing that we're like. But what he does now is he goes and like chills on the couch and waits for me. I do see him there pretty frequently, yeah. hanging out, looking at his phone. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Scrolling through TikTok. Yeah. Like, it's almost biking like season, buddy. No yeah, worries. Yeah, I know. He'll be, so he'll be chilling. He'll be chilling. Yeah. He that's loves cool. his motorcycle. That's awesome. He loves it. But he went from the Yamaha R1 to the MT-09, mm-hmm. and then the Aprilia, and then now he has another Yamaha R1. So he, like, traded them in. Mm. Interesting. But he okay. loves the R1. That's, that's, that's cool. to your fire for Natalia to get you to ride a bike. He's going to have to um, show us or give us some lessons or something. Yeah, for real, yeah. right? Like he's that's cool. Really, he's good. Teach he's us the way. Teach us the way, He, Taylor. like, drags me. I don't know how. Oh. But he wears, Who's like, God, a whole bro? stew. Yeah. I don't know, like, how he... I don't no know. No fear. What a guy. Wow. Yeah. Cool. And I, like, I trust him because I've been on the back of the bike with him, so mm-hmm. I know how he rides. Mm-hmm. And, like, mm. he's just good with maneuvering the bike yeah he has nose huh yeah some guys got it that's cool good deal okay is there anything anything else no good um so where can people find more about you um and what is your what is your future look like have you taken clients soon what do people it's like a last tip that you want people to know about you little mission statement so well i did throw out there the whole life coaching thing um i do want to help more people just like with their lifestyle like creating routines um i feel like the past like five years i've established like being able to create a morning routine a night routine Mm -hmm. to be able to sleep well so i sleep eight to nine hours every night Good Which for you. even Man. even when I work the gym yeah. till nine fifteen, I'm in bed by ten, up by six. <sighs> Which a lot of Man. people are like, I don't know how, and I it's wish. all about like a setting time, a yeah. bedtime, mm-hmm. setting a wake up yeah. time. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, six. Dude. I have a hard time getting six. But that's yeah. like, yeah, right? that's so where bad. everything starts. I feel like is mm-hmm. our like the quality of your sleep and. Mm. But okay. it all it's the routines. <laughs> it's keeping yourself healthy. Mm-hmm. It's what you eat. Not okay. eating too close to bedtime. How I've heard that before. How long or, or how much time should <laughs> should there be in between your last meal and when you go to bed? I'd say like two to three hours. <sighs> Bro, the other th- night I made a sandwich <laughs> at ten thirty. It was a but gr- so your oh. body is so your body thinks you have to be awake because you're digesting the food still. What? Jeez. Yeah. That's I will so eat bad. and then lay right down. Of toes. Really? <laughs> of toes, yeah. bro. I'm laying, laying Is that So as you get older, it becomes more unhealthy because mm. your body's not able to digest the food while you're just laying there. Mm. So for like sugar crazy. levels and everything. That makes sense. So yeah. Sense. So I usually, like my routine is like go to the gym. I have dinner at like 6, 6.15, and then I go to bed by like 9. Oh, it's yeah. such a good habit. I'm yeah. so, I'm really bad. Like I'll be cooking dinner sometimes. Like when I get home, I'll be cooking like a nice salmon at like ten. Oh my god! Like ten thirty. I swear. That's As late. Marcos. One time we we were we filmed the super late. We had Sheen on. We, uh, were, we were just doing like a bunch of like back and forth stuff, like trying to get content. Um, because Sheen will come in here for content too, which is kind of funny. Um, like for his own stuff, yeah. which is funny. <laughs> but I'm um, like, I need. He's like, I need. I need to use your room. I'm like, all right. So. Um, but like it was like ten thirty one night, and uh, oh I gosh. still didn't eat yet. And I was like, "Well, this is the- no, it wasn't." It was tuna. 
I was like, well, if the tuners are coming oh, out, like I had them thought, and I was like, I gotta make these with some spinach. Yeah. So, At like, least you ate healthy. Oh yeah, so we you always didn't, eat, like get take yeah. out or one. No, and something. I always we always eat healthy. It's just like the idea of like it's late, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm about to, or I'll make like all beef burgers or something. I'm like, well, if I got this pound of beef, I'm about to chef mm-hmm. it up. And like, make a big ass burger. Okay. <laughs> so so don't do that. Yeah, don't do yeah. that. It's bad. Probably not okay. the best. What are some other quick tips? Some quick uh, sleeping tips you could, you would give. I would say blue light blocking glasses. That sounds ridiculous, but really. So screen time before bed is like it's gonna interrupt your sleep. <laughs> um, I actually need to be better with this because I used to be really good with it. I would even wear them at the gym mm-hmm. when I'm working late, just because like the fluorescent lights mm-hmm. um, oh. that can affect your sleep. It can make it harder for you to fall asleep. Interesting. Interesting. Seeing the Man. sunrise and the sunset is important every day. It's important. It's important for your circadian rhythm. Really? Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That's some shit. Yep. Jeez. Yep. Dude, we're shot. We have no it's sort of terrible. schedule. We there. go to bed whenever. <laughs> like, we have no, Jeez. like, that's so bad. You'll get there. Man. But yeah, we need sleep for sure. Damn. My thing is, why can't I just sleep when I'm dead? Like, we spend a third of our <laughs> lives sleeping. But that, I love that's sleep. That's crazy. I love sleep though. I love getting in a nice cozy bed. Like I after do after all the shit we do, bro, I'm so excited. Get in bed, cut up with the animals in Shelby, watch some anime. Oh, right now watching World Trigger. Um bang you recommend. Gotcha. Really do you guys watch anime by any okay. chance? No. Sad. I watch all the stupid reality TV shows no. that I shouldn't be watching. She watches them too. Do you watch like Love, is Love is Blind? <laughs> no! I came home the other day and Hurricane watching Love and Blind. Oh Love God, is Blind. I was like, no. It's t- this season is awful. It's just. She said toxic. the same thing. It's she said it's toxic and she said the guys are ugly. Yeah, and one of the guys Damn. had a relationship outside of the show. What? And was still like is dating is people no-no? and. I don't even know, but it's like all over TikTok that he was he's, like. Oh, he's dating somebody and he's yeah. on the show. Why he's is this show. show so popular? I don't. I don't it, know. But the thing is, like, it's when I drama. watch it, she it's gets me, drama, she'll get me watching it, and then all of a sudden, I'll, she'll be, she'll be like, "You got to, can you just watch the episode with me?" Next thing you know, bro, I'm, I'm a couple episodes in. You're invested. Yeah. <laughs> and next thing you know, I'm getting concerned about like, oh my god, are they gonna like? Oh she no, gonna she say, didn't. Is she gonna say yes? <laughs> like, is she gonna say yes to her at the altar? Yeah. Oh, then we watched the Ultimate, and that was a fucking rough one. Yeah. Oh yeah. All those shows. I gotta yeah. say, I'm just guilty with dance moms and my sister. Right? <laughs> They're brutal, bro. Brutal. Those moms are brutal. Dude. Yeah, I know. It's like, but it gets you hooked. Yeah. They know what they're doing. But um, so where can people find out more about you? Like social media? Like, what are you on? So I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we'll link her below. Think, below. Yeah. In the show yeah, notes. link me below. <laughs> below. <laughs> All right. So thank you for joining us. Of uh, this thank is you a, this, for having me. No, no this, this is great. This is great. Mm-hmm. I was really excited for this. The pod just canceled last week. Um, I had a case of the sniffles. It turned out to not be the sniffles. Um, and I'm still like, it's still like in my throat, bro. I'm, I'm, really, I'm all of a sudden sniffly. I oh. told you, bro. I told I told yeah. you last week. I was like, bro, don't yeah. come near me. Marcus is a tank, though. He'll be like, nope, it's all good. I'm still going to come over. And then I spread it around. Um, but yeah, it's tough. So, so, try. Well, you were the one who just told me the East Coast bug, right? There's a bug in the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like getting people, really? but um, yes, yeah, so we're hearing like yeah. everyone's getting sick. Like um, Luke's family's sick. He's about to go to uh, Utah this week. I was like, I'm sorry. Oh. Um, yeah. it's crazy. So stay healthy. Yeah, I'm trying. Um, I'm no longer sick. Yeah, I, I just like sound good. nasally, but um, cause it's like I had like a lot of mucus built up from bad, but um, but yeah. So thank you for coming on. This is this, this is uh, episode nine or ten. Um, of the cool. Astra cast cool, cool, and cool. uh yeah stay tuned to our next episode we'll be having on somebody else we have some pretty cool guests coming up yeah so like big big time investors absolutely tanks and and um leading be, the industry they'll be they'll be sure they'll be sure to leave some nuggets for everyone so um it will make us look extremely yeah. small cool <laughs> like cool these these are some of the biggest cats in the state yeah so, so. we're excited to have them on and uh yeah, stay tuned for those. We'll drop some nuggets about the business. Cool. Um, Check out Michaela. Um, and do you have like a, I, I guess if, if um, you don't have a, pro- a professional email, do you? Not yet. No. Coming I soon? Should. <laughs> I should. Coming soon. <laughs> Coming soon. Okay, Coming cool. soon. DM her on Instagram and she'll have her professional email made. She'll give it to yeah. you for all business inquiries. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for watching. That's a... Um, Glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> I looked at it and it said zero, and I was like, "Oh, Mark." <laughs> okay, listen. Uh-uh. That's okay. Um, we're good. Does everybody feel comfortable?
it's over. Quick little I'm break. I'm so sorry. <laughs> mm. Okay. That. Go ahead. Are you? Go ahead. Hey. I'm trying you to even try remember the point my, thing? my name on Instagram. I think it's Mickey M Fitness. I want to yeah. try some. If you just yeah. like point, we'll make it pop right below you. <laughs> Sounds good. This is Q the intro. Outro.